Yo, what's up boys? As promised, a new Dopa review. Today we're gonna to be breaking down Dopa's perfect wave management on Oriana. These last couple of weeks, my man, he's been gaining a couple of hundred LP on average per day. His most played is the Oriana. Super strong at the moment. Um, and today's game, I've picked one where he's fallen very far behind. His team has had a massive goal disadvantage and he's able to crawl his way back. So stick around to the end of it to make sure to see how you can actually carry these games that a lot of people FF or think unwinnable. Dopa, no game is unwinnable. He'll stick in there, farm perfectly, build advantages, and come back into the game. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Just quickly, guys, I don't know if you've heard, but apparently there's this, like, they're leaking a new champion through, like, social media or something. I don't know. This chick's, like, making music. She has, like, an Instagram page. Apparently, it's going to be a mid lane musical mage. I'm pretty hyped about it. It kind of gives me some Zoe vibes, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully, it's a mid lane champion and we can start to pop off on her. Jumping onto the rift now, it is Oriana versus Silas. This definitely favors the Oriana, especially in the early game where you're able to get a lot of harass. The unsealed spellblock Dopa loves to run at the moment. You see Biscuit, Delivery, and Time Warp Tonic. Secondaries is Scorch and Minor Flow Band, so it's a very poke heavy lane, but you have a lot of sustain, okay? You should be looking to poke the Silas out as often as possible in the early game. And the wave he has opted for a slow push. The wave will crash into the Silas on this second wave, you can see. On this next wave, the wave will crash. This will give Dopa around about a 10, 5 to 10 second opening to get a ward or look for a jungle skirmish. So when you start ordering this wave early and you slow shove it into something like a Silas that has no wave clear, you will get this crash and it's going to enable you to get an early ward out or assist your jungle. You can see on the minimap right now, he gets the shove in. Silas has no wave clear. He's able to move across to the Kindred, but the Kindred picks up first blood anyway. Thank you very much. But just know, let's say he got there in time. He actually leveled his, his shield second, his E. If he got there in time assisted at, that would have been really beneficial for his side of the team. So you can see why he's done that. And at the moment, the wave should slow shove back into Dope, as you see. He's looking for those auto trades. And because of Silas's nature, his passive, which is an AoE, um, him autoing like that is going to slow shove the wave back into Dope. And now look at the wave. Look at the wave situated. You want to chunk this a little bit? Look at Dope. He's getting the autos on the waves. He'll chunk this a little bit. And now as this next wave comes in, he'll get a freeze. And now when Silas tries to move up, as Dope hits level 3, he has his QWE, he'll be able to harass the Silas as much as humanly possible. Um, and even like threaten a gank from the Kindred. So you can see every single time now Silas moves up for a CS, Dopa should be moving in with that ball, getting a QW and an auto, and just harassing as much as possible. Good thing about Oriana as well, you can pull the wave, and you can shield yourself from the minion autos with your E, um, which is going to enable yourself a little bit to, to get a little bit more health, rather than getting chunked by a million minions. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of you guys watched the LEC game, but you saw Caps doing a lot of really good um, wave pulls to hold his freezes when he was playing LeBlanc and get those kills when his team um, wanted to come through because the enemy obviously can't move. When you get a freeze like this, every single CS, you've got to move up and put yourself at a risk. And you can see the wave will eventually bounce back, um, but the harass is already done. Silas chunked out pretty low, but he still has a health pot and a, uh, a Bicky. But he was very vulnerable to the Kindred Ganks, which didn't come through. The wave now, it's going to get a hard crash. Dopa probably going to get a hard shove into a reset, I would say, because he's no mana. Um, and we'll see what he does with this. Okay. Silas opts for a base, teleports back with the double Dorans and a refillable. Silas should try and stop the recall here. Can't get it, but he has to chunk his wave. So Dopa will get a back, a back, a back. Why can't I talk today? What the hell? A back now. And let's see what he buys. Dark Seal, Dorans, Control Ward, and he's going to teleport back now. Advantage, obviously, to him. Double Dorans versus Corrupting Dorans and a Dark Seal. It's a no-brainer who's going to win. You have way more sustain on the Orianna side. And obviously, when you get those items like the Dark Seal, get a couple of kills early, snowballs into the Magis, and you've won the game. Move in. Probably get the... Yeah. Try and get your control warders... When you buy your wards or have wards available, try and get them out as often as possible, guys. I see too many people buy a control ward and it sits in their inventory. Then they get ganked on a brush where they could have put their ward and they die and they go, oh shit, I probably should have warded that. Yeah. Yeah, you should have. 
That 75 gold is important, but only if you use it, you'll get that value. The vision has been denied. I don't... Ooh! Dopa maybe could have flash autoed there, but we know what Dopa's like with his flashes. They hold it. He'll hard shove this. That vision denial was perfect to set up for the Kindred gank. Currently has... What's that? 11 CS lead? I don't think Silas is able to soak any of this XP. I'm trying to assist the Kindred here. All he can really do is give the shield. But yeah. He doesn't want to hard commit over. Just bail. That's going to stop Dope. Dope had a really nice recall there. He could have recalled for another advantage onto the Silas. Dope. Oh, control wood there. Has the option to get another freeze here if he wants. He wants to, to be honest, get a base in, so he's probably going to try and get a hard shove. You saw he swapped his teleport with the unsealed spellbook to a heal. Very, very good 2v2 summoner. Gives you movement speed, heals your ally. As the site was looking for really heavy trades, steals the Oriana ult, actually misses it. Dope presses his ult. Ooh. Q, Q, Q. Flash. Ah, man. I would have went for that. Would I have died, maybe? Probably. Would I have wasted Flash? Maybe, but... I don't know. I, don't, I just don't know how he has this much self-control. I can't even live with myself if I, if I don't take those aggress aggressive 1v1s. But, that's why Dope is Doper. He'll hard shove this because he wants to get the base in. He's got to stick around for next wave. Silas can shove it. Can, can freeze it. He needs to shove it. Dallas doesn't even move in for the pull. He's just going to take the wave. Almost a 20 farm advantage now for Dopa's Oriana. The lead obviously assisted by the Kindred, but it was all set up by Dopa's wave control. 70 CS at 7 minutes. We'll get a base now. Got 1300 gold. So should be a lost chapter picked up. Got a 400 gold lead for him. But his team overall is at a 1k gold disadvantage. Gets a lost chapter. Dopa, guys, the longer the game goes, the more confident he is. So he makes sure to farm perfectly, and he doesn't panic, okay? Even if his team's 10k gold behind, he doesn't panic. He plays a very slow, controlled game, and he'll wait for his moment. Some games, the moment won't come, but if they do, he has the farm, he has the items, and he's ready to go, okay? Um, don't rush into things that you're not ready for just because you're a couple of kills behind. Don't, like, obviously this is a no-brainer, but don't, like, talk to you. Don't start telling your team, oh, this looks like a loss. Oh, this game's going to be hard. Don't, I hate that negativity in, in chat. Just play your game. Be positive as possible. Positivity in League is so important. Um, it's, it's, fun. it's the easiest thing to be good at. Like, you don't, just don't say anything or just be supportive. Don't say anything negative. It's not that hard, but so many people fail at that. Especially like when I see people like give me like uh, their accounts, they're like, oh, can you review my account? And then it's like, yeah, I'm coming off a 14 day ban from being too toxic. I'm like, okay. Not only is your gameplay needs to be improved, but your behavior in game is super important to climbing. Moving into the river now. Kindred's still playing hyper aggressive. She is, I mean, would you, is she ahead? I mean, she's slightly ahead. It should counter something like the Java anyway. This Silas, of course, will be Q maxing, guys. Q max Silas with GLP. I'll probably end up doing a video on it. It's super, super potent. In Korea, it's it's picked almost every game. This GLP Q max Silas. It's it's one of the strongest picks in the game at the moment. Um, Silas, in my opinion, is one of the strongest picks in the game at the moment. Just a little bit hard to play. Especially now when it's like you Q maxing, so you don't have that W buffer to kind of like pump you up to like to full health almost. That lands. That's crazy, man. We're gonna try and weave as many orders as he can over here. Has flash and heal available. Ten minutes in, they're two K gold behind. Their team comp late game is super good, guys. Think about it. 
Ezra Lux with Kindred. And an Orianna for the shields and the Camilla to Jace. This game goes past 30, 35 minutes. You would always assume that this blue side team would take the take the win. Kindred obviously falls off. Jace falls off. Jarvan falls off. Silas, I mean, I wouldn't say Silas falls off. I like Silas, especially when you have these ultimates to steal. Harold picked up. That's going to be given. The plates away to Dopa. The tower won't drop, but it's going to set it up. If Silas takes a bad room or dies, he'll be able to drop that tower down. He has kill pressure here, but the problem is their bot lane and the Jarv, and you can see are hovering towards him. Oh, I thought he might have pulled his ultimate there. I think it could have been close. Don't want to let that Silas get a free base in here. Hindu trying to pull the game back. Their bot lane is so far ahead, though. He becomes out from the Silas, and he'll hard, dope will hard shove this and try and get a base, I assume. No mana. He is 110 at 11, 10 CS per minute. 1.8k in the bank. He wants to look for that teleport back, so he blows the heal. Teleport on the wave, or is he looking bot side? What's the plan, brother? Oh my god, the Jarvan comes in. There's no point teleporting now. If he teleports, he only gets 3 CS. Dude, like, don't blow your teleport to get back to lane for no reason. You gotta think about it, okay? Now he has that teleport to counteract the bot lane. Dive, it seems. Comes in. Hops the ultimate. Pulls back. Trying to live here. I'm not sure. Oh, he can. Kindred coming through. Oh, can they get anything? I don't think they get anything. He comes in. Nothing happens, to be honest. Blows his TP. Try and save the tower now. Three kills to 11. Jarvan picks up the kill onto the Jarvan. Okay. Lulu has to burn her flash. And Dopa picks up his first kill of the game. All of that patience. He finally gets it. He finally gets it. Okay. He's not stressing. His farm is exceptional. He's going to hit massive item power spikes in the mid late game. He knows this. When you play scaling champs like Orianna, don't stress it, guys. Good wave control. Play very safe and controlled in the early game. Mid to late start to take over. He's in the side lane now, and he has a pretty big advantage onto the side lane. Oh, has to blow the flash there. Still hovering in the wave. He really doesn't want to base until he has that lost until he has that uh, Ludens. I wouldn't be yeah. You see the Silas. I wouldn't be surprised if he stays here. QW. One more Q is the kill. Oh, he has his ultimate. Pops ultimate and it is an absolute griefer. Doesn't get the kill. Doesn't want to go forward just in case someone's camping in that brush. Should have picked up another kill there, but at the end of the day. He's going to base, and he has enough for the upgrade, so it's not all bad. Let's see where he passed towards. Mid lane tower's dropped. I feel like he wants to... Yeah, he wants to go bot lane, and he's trying to send his bot lane mid lane, I believe. Yep. The bot lane tower should drop. I don't think they can defend it, though. You could just um let it drop, and you could just freeze this wave if you needed. If I was playing something like a Cassidy, I reckon I'd freeze this wave. Let the gold come into me. And just wait. Just scale. Because there's no there's there's nothing really to contest at the moment. 
Dope with no flash is going to have to play super cautious in these side lanes, okay? You see, you cannot, you cannot extend deep into the side lane here. You put your vision out, he sees the Callista coming in looking for a pick, and he'll move back out. He'll pick up all of these jungle camps from his jungler, guys. As, you're, as a mid laner, if the camp's up, just take it. Unless your jungler needs it, or like, ah, uh, he's getting gifted a blue here. Thank you very much to the Kindred. Going to come in the mid lane now. Salas has the GLP completed. Super strong. They're around about what? 3.5k down. But I still feel confident in the game state, knowing the things I do. Um, some games, guys, you'll, you know, if you're into something like a Cassidy and a Caitlyn, you're super far behind. Look, sometimes maybe FFing, it's not that the bad of, like, a really bad option if you're super far behind. But games that are close and there's some type of uh, win condition, always stay in it. Never give up. And honestly, don't if you if you blow Master Tier, don't give up. I'm just talking about, like, the high challenger games when you're, when you're behind too much. Some games, yes, they're not recoverable. That's why the game times are actually the lowest in challenger, scaling down to iron where the games are the highest... Just because there's so many FFs, especially in Korean Challenger when the games are over. So he's dropped into the side lane here. No flash still. Has a barrier available. He's just going to keep farming and praying for a good opportunity to come in and hit a big ultimate. Ocean Dragon live. 10 CS per minute still on. It looks like he kind of want to contest. There's a control wood there, yep. Unable to get in and contest. Keep farming and waiting for the waves to crash in. The thing about Oriana, the thing that sucks, is that you have no... Like, if you're playing Echo in the side lane, it's a lot easier. Even TF, because you have the potential of, of ulting, ulting out. But when you play Oriana, you get collapsed on by Jav and Silas, you're dead. Unless you have Flash or Phase Rush, you're dead. 1.6k gold, probably get an Oblivion. Oblivion Orm picked up. He's got that 33 magic pen. And he's massive now. I want to see him join a fight and just... If he hits a 3 to 4 man ult, they'll win it. Level advantage. Huge item advantage over the Silas. And he looks for an opportunity to group. Unfortunately, the Camille dies. It doesn't look like he can salvage this topside fight, so he'll probably go back down, pick up that bot lane wave, because there's two or three waves crashing here. Once again, guys, he's making sure to get the farm. He's not panicking. Gets hit by the Silas. Honestly, I think he can still live, right? Pops the ult. And gets the kill onto the Silas. Splendid. Second kill of the game. He'll back here. He has his TP if he wants to rejoin. We rejoining or are we just running? What are we doing? What's the game plan? Someone's pinging off Nash. He TP's topside. He? Oh, they... Oh, sorry. Nash. Good one, Drew. Harold. 18 minutes. Picks up the Harold. Steals it away from the Jarvan. Really good map read. Holy shit. That's massive. He'll be able to shove in this topside. And probably... Look, he could pop the Herald for the top lane tower if he needed. And then regroup. Let's see what his game plan is. Okay, he's looking to just regroup on the mid lane. Probably could have shoved one more there. I'm not sure... I'm not sure what his plan on this regroup is. He doesn't have ultimate either. I guess he just simply doesn't want to be overextended in the top side. Confused. Taking all the farm away from the Ezreal. He kind of is just disregarding the Ezreal. Let's be honest. Just taking, stealing everywhere. Like, my Ezreals do this. They AFK. But he comes in, picks up another kill onto the Jarvan. The Rim River Skirmish. He has his ultimate. Oh, that's a big... Oh, Pips the ultimate onto the Callista. Enemy team overextended. And this is maybe the Nash call. 
He still has his flash as well. This is perfect. They don't want to do the Nash. They don't want to risk it. So Derp will take the recall. I think maybe like, I don't know. I feel like it's maybe possible. He popped like the Herald and then they went and done it because the Herald was like a split push pressure, but doesn't quite do it. Morello picked up for Dopa. Can anyone tell me why he's picked up the Morello instead of upgrading to something like the Death Cap or the Void? The answer is the healing reduction that he wants onto the Silas and onto the Callista. Callista with the Lulu. Silas heal. It's simply too much to ignore. So he'll pick that up because the rest of his team doesn't have any heal reduce. And he'll come down into the mid lane. Looking to salvage this turret. It's probably not yet. It, it's not really... Like guys, if there's two or three people hovering on the tower and they look, it feels like they're going to dive, you're probably going to get dove. Give the tower. Who cares? Save your life. It's way more important. Blue buff funding is secured. Thank you very much to the Kindred. Pick up these camps. What's the Herald play? I want to see the Herald on Nash play, but I doubt it's going to happen. He's sitting on, what, 770 at the moment. Eight stacks on the Dark Seal. We all know what this is going to get pumped up into when he has the gold. Blast one has been purchased. No MR on the team as of yet. So Void stuff may be a little bit preemptive, but a Void can never... The thing is, a Void can never be a bad purchase, pretty much, guys. As the game progresses and gets longer, it just becomes more and more valuable. Herald picked up mid. we try and force a team fight. So the Herald has been used before the Dragon. And you can see how this pressure point just enables the Kindred to get a free Drake here. The enemy has to respond to the Herald, otherwise it's going to demolish the mid lane tower. Kill onto the Jarvan. Every time this Jarvan comes forward and overextends, Dopa comes in. Just QW, QW, QWE. That's all he needs. Ten stacks on the Dark Seal now, hovering towards the Nash. It's still 11 kills to 18, but the gold is almost even with a better comp. Never be fast with those kills, guys. 10 kills to 20, but the, the team with 10 kills can actually still be ahead. You need to be thinking about the team comp and the farm, the situation, the win condition. You got to be thinking about all these things, honestly, as you start getting into champion select. Should be always on the back of your mind how your team's going to win, how your scaling is like. It's interesting how he splits differently on, on the Orianna. It's a reactionary split. Whilst when he plays Twisted Fate, or like if someone would play something like a Echo, it's more of a proactive split where you're trying to get the, tower, the towers. Dopa is more so just making sure to drop into the side lanes to get the farm. This is how you get 10 farm per minute. Because you're actually picking up these side lanes. In lower elos, instead of doing this, you'll just sit mid sharing farm with your team as all the waves crash into the turret and you lose it all. I'm going to come through. Has ultimate. Has flash exhaust. Picks up the kill onto the Jarvan. This Jarvan's having a bad time. Every engage. There's just not quite enough follow-up by his team. Has flash. This Ezreal's just playing like a maniac. The good thing is, he's still farming and leveling, not too bad. Bot side looks like Jace is going to drop as well. They've got to be careful if they hard commit on this bot side that the enemy will get Nash with the Callista. It's looking like they're going to hover it. But Camille TP will stop it for sure. Instead, they'll look for a pick onto the Camille, yeah? Really good map awareness by the Camille. She TPs across to stop the Nash, then backs up when the... Ooh, it looks like they might be on it. Dopa? Can we check? No, they got off of it. Takes the safe path. 
Gonna move through. Watch the ball. We're gonna look for a really good ultimate here. Let's see if we can land one. Hmm. Going to the Silas. Ball control. Puts the ball onto the Kindred. Just to try and protect her. And you can also speed her up. Kindred going to move across for the mark. He's going to collect the Rift Scuttler. Shove top, probably. And then we'll look for a reset, I reckon. Not looking for a straight reset. We got 2k gold. What is the purchase here? Void Staff straight out. It does start to make sense now that Jarvan is starting to get their magic resist. Lulu also. And you can see how often he is actually focusing the Jarvan. That's the people in front of him. And when he has this Void Staff, it's going to enable him to shred the Jarvan's magic resist. I think it's only like 35 or 40 MR. Um, anything above and the Void Staff starts to get so much more value than flat uh, penetration or just straight AP. But he's already got that 33 Magic Pen. So probably the Callista is going to get the Death Dance. So here we go. We're going get, to start getting even more value as the game progresses. Playing Reaction here on this wave. Comes across. He collects it. He has heal and exhaust for his summoners, by the way. Good luck trying to kill him. Takes the wave, moves into the mid lane. Very risky business fighting now. Whatever Tim gets an ace is going to get the Nash and probably get the end. Vision control, looking to get picks. You always want this mid prior, and then you want to move into the objective. So they get the first shove, then they move in. Oh, the Silas is looking for the Lux here in the bot lane. Can Dopa help him with the shield? Pops the shield in. Yo, please come out. Pops a two-man ultimate. Has to be careful. Exhaust the Callista. Okay, Lulu griefed hard there. They're going to come back in. Look for the Q. W. Silas. Kill onto the Silas. Seventh kill of the game. We should be rushing the Nasher straight after this. A lot of the time, guys, people get too greedy. They'll try and, like, get an inhib, and then they'll try and get the Nash and then base if they get an ace or a fight like that. Just take the Nash. With the Nash, it should mean at least... at least two inhibs if you have an advantage. And one inhib onto a Kalista that has Hurricane... What does that give you? Does that really give you an extra, like, pressure point? Hardly. They wave clear it so easily, it doesn't really matter. But this Baron not only gives them the Baron buff, but it also takes it off the map. So it's a much easier, like, it, it, it's much, I guess, like, even if the enemy team gets an ace, they're not going to get that objective in the end of the game. Soul Stealer has been picked up. It's going to be a Soul Stealer. Last item will be a Death Cap. We'll be selling that Corrupting. And we're looking to get that 25 stacks here. 29 minute soul stealer. That is. That is interesting, but you can see the value on it. Dope is pretty confident. He'll stack that up. The game will go late. He'll get that in death cap and start one shotting. Pops ultimate. Enemy team has FF the game. They've realized the disadvantage they're in. And hopefully, you guys have learned just how impactful CSing correctly in wave management is to scale into the mid to late where you're going to start getting those opportunities. You don't have to get massive advantages in the early game, guys. Learn from Dopa, and hopefully this has helped you guys to climb in your own gameplay. So until next time, I'll catch you later. <laughs>